está echadita. Oiga, señor, we are federales, you know, the mountain police. If you're in the police, where are your beagles? Beagles? We ain't got no beagles. We don't need no beagles. We don't need no stinking beagles. Hey guys, greetings from Superior Land. Just yesterday, this lake was like glass. Then I wake up this morning and it's going off again. It just shows you how quick things can change on Lake Superior. So, especially this time of year. You're probably having a hard time hearing me because of the wind, so I'm gonna walk back down the trail and I'm gonna start talking to you guys about what's happening on backwaters and backroads. Okay guys, well I'll just cut to the chase here. I sold the adventure craft to a nice fella that lives on the East Coast. I'm actually leaving right now to go meet him in Ohio. And I wanna use that time to try to explain to you guys why this boat didn't quite work for me. It's not to say that it's not a great boat because it is, but uh, I'm looking for something a little different and I'm gonna have lots of time here to try to articulate it well. So, and we'll just talk about boats in general and what, and just uh, how there's never is quite the perfect boat. So, stay tuned. craft to its new owner um, we're actually meeting about halfway he lives in the East Coast and I'm coming down the length of Michigan and we're meeting in Ohio uh, and I wanted to try to give you an abbreviated review on my opinion of the boat and owning it for the summer um, if you have 30 minutes or so and you want to hear a more detailed um, review of it I did make a video and I put it in the description below it's an unlisted video because I just want to I like giving people the, the choices you know if I if I listed it, it would just pop up and people would be kind of confused with what I'm doing and I don't at the end of the day these are my least favorite type of videos to make is the ones where I just turn the camera on, on and start talking but sometimes you know that's that's the best way to get stuff across so um, I'm gonna try to do this in a couple minutes this is like the abbreviated version of owning the adventure craft which as many some folks might know there's not a lot of information on them out there part of it is there just isn't a lot of them around and then um, you know for whatever reason you won't find much of it on YouTube so uh, I had the boat for about three months I have first summer I used it I don't know maybe half a dozen times and uh, it's for the right person it's going to be a great boat because they're very unique they're very niche they're I think they're like an overnighter boat or a weekend boat they're they're not really a comfortable live aboard boat for extended periods of time um I get into that more in the other in the longer <clears throat> excuse me in the longer video the accordion uh, doors in the front and back the plexiglass doors I'm not a fan of 
the reasons why are they're just very cum cumbersome. They, if they're tinted, when you have them open, they, they have a double layer of plexiglass between you and the helm, which makes it really hard to, to see out of, and that was the, the problem with me. They also are hard to seal. They'll, I think they'll leak no matter what you do. I mean, I, I, will, I would be curious if anyone's ever conquered that problem, but um, just the fact that they have so many seams and so many hinges means that they have places for water intrusion, like when it rains hard, and that's what I found too. It's not a big deal. I mean, the interiors of those boats are pretty bullet, you know, what I should say, waterproof. I mean, they're just, they're, they're molded fiberglass holes, so it's not like you're gonna really hurt anything, but uh, you know, who wants to have water coming into their living space, you know? So, um, I love how they draft so little, uh, less than a foot. I think it was, they're about 11 inches, 10 or 11 inches, which is absolutely amazing for a 28 foot boat with a cabin on it, if you think about it. There's probably no other boat its size that drafts so little. And having low draft is important if you like to get into nooks and crannies. Um, I found when I did the Riverside of the Great Loop that if your boat drafts less than two feet you basically double the places you can go because there's just so many floodplains out there that are two or three feet deep and so um, that kept the trawlers out of them and just even uh, an average cabin cruiser you're going to be you know running the bottom so um, I love that about them also the fact that they have they're an outboard design you know they run outboards and we're talking about the Avenger craft here um, that, the fact that you can get up on plane really easy with low horsepower, they're kind of like a sea dory in that regard, and and they can get up and go. The an oil injected two stroke that I that's on the one I just sold uh, will get the boat up in ideal conditions, uh, pushing somewhere to 30 miles an hour, which on the water is pretty quick. And again, there's not a lot of boats of its size with a cabin that'll do that with a very modest amount of horsepower. So. The boats have a lot going for them. They check a lot of boxes, but um, I think as far as living on one, which I like to do, I, you know, I have dreams and I've done and I have future dreams to uh, live on a boat, you know, for weeks or months at a time, you know, finish the rest of the Great Loop and do a lot more of the river system and stuff like that. And I just would not be comfortable on an adventure craft. I don't really like the fact that it has the hull, just the hallway, I should say, um, hallway going right down the middle of the boat with the bench seats and when you want to sleep you have to pull a bed out you know every time you want to sleep and then put it away unless you like crawling over your bed all the time to get to the back of the boat um, uh, the fact that they have a walk around cabin it is a narrow walk around but nonetheless you can you know hold on to the railing and walk around the, the cabins which do, does have its benefits um, especially when you're docking and going through locks and stuff like that wanting to jump get off and on the boat what it does um, is at the expense of having a narrow, narrower cabin, which already with the design of the boat makes it feel like you're you're in a cave. You're you're down inside the boat, and having a shanty boat style boat really spoiled me. I love being on top of the water, up on top of a platform, just in a room surrounded by windows. Um, that you can just watch the world go by at five or six miles an hour. And the adventure craft is somewhat like that. It does have a lot of big windows, don't get me wrong, but you're still kind of down inside the boat. You're on a different level. You're in a lower level and then you step up onto the decks. If you're like me and you like to carry a small scooter, um, I would say it's almost impossible. I mean, I did, I did have a little 49cc spree scooter once or twice on the deck of the adventure craft this summer, um, getting to and from a couple spots outside of town. But it was a total pain to load it um, and unload it, and it really didn't have a good place to put it. If you had some kind of dinghy davit or a crane up on the roof, which you could easily do, you could then, of course, lift a, a lightweight scooter, like a 49cc scooter, up onto the roof and have a spot for it. And that's what I would do if I was going to commit myself to this boat. Um, uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? They, they trailer really well. I'm pulling it right now, and I can hardly tell it's back there with my Tundra. Um, they track down the road good. Of course, it helps to have a really good trailer, which I, this one does, you know, aluminum trailer, uh, tandem axle. And, but they're not very heavy. You know, they're big boats, and they're tough. They're obviously very well built. Um, 
but they're also kind of, you know, they're light. I think the whole package back there is about 4,500 pounds is my best guess. And, uh, you know, any half ton truck with any decent power is going to pull it down the road just fine. So they have a lot going for them, but the, it's not quite for me. I'm still looking for my forever boat and, um, I'm going to continue to do that and hopefully add some entertainment to this channel as I do it. it I've gotten, let's just say owning this boat, I've gotten a lot closer to knowing what I want. And sometimes that's the best you can ask for, you know, and no harm done. I bought it. I sold it. I have not, I didn't lose any money on it. And I'm, I'm glad that I had it for the summer and I had a few good times, but I'm ready to move on to another boat. I know just a little bit more about what I want. Okay, guys, uh, hopefully this is helpful. I uh, went a little longer than I was expecting, but um, uh, if you want to uh, know more and I'll get a little more into the details of stuff, just you know, follow the link below. And uh, thanks for watching.